we are going to see about the eighth unit in plus two physics, dual nature of radiation and matter. So, in the case of uh, new dual nature of radiation and matter, particle nature of the waves, it is nothing but for radiation. Then wave nature of particles is nothing but for your matter. In this unit, we are going to see about the phenomenon of electron emission and its types. The observations made by the scientist Hetz, Hallwag and Leonard. Then uh, the photoelectric effects and the laws governed for the photoelectric effect. The concept of the quantization of energy. What is the meaning for quantization of energy? What are the effects produced by the quantization of energy? Photocell and its applications. The particle nature of radiation and the wave nature of matter. The de Broglie's uh, equation and the de Broglie wavelength. The construction and uh, working of electron microscope. The Davison and Germer experiment. X-rays and its production. X-ray spectra and the types of the X-ray spectra. Now we are going to see about what are the differences between a particle nature and wave nature. And example for your particle nature body and uh, examples for wave nature. Here for a particle nature, examples for uh, particles, marble balls, sand particles, protons, electrons, etc. And for your wave nature body, ripples formed in a pond, light waves, sound waves. See, in the case of dual nature, the same particles are just uh, in uh, some conditions they are obe obeying the particle theory and in uh, some other ways, in some other times they are obeying the wave nature. So, we are just uh, familiar with uh, particle and uh, wave nature in our day to day experience. The particle is a material object which is considered uh, in a tiny concentration matter. So, it is localized in space and time. But in the case of uh, waves, they are not localized in space and time because it is a vast area. Broad distribution of energy is uh, just possible. Then for uh, both particles and waves, the energy and the momentum be carried out from one point to another point. So in the case of electromagnetic radiations are considered as the waves because they are exhibiting uh, interference, diffraction and polarization. So under some other suitable uh, situations and circumstances, uh, they are obeying the particle nature. For example, in the case of uh, photoelectric effect, black body radiation, under some other situations, they are obeying the wave nature. So, even the electrons and protons, initially the scientists thought that they are only obeying uh, particle nature, they are having the particle nature. But afterwards only, it proved that even the wave nature are possible for your particle. So, uh, in this unit, we are going to analyze about the wave nature of particles and uh, the particle nature of waves, that is the dual nature of the wave and particle. So, in the case of electron emission in metals, the electrons are uh, just moving in here and there due to kinetic energy. In all the atoms, in electron emission actually in metals, the electrons in the outermost shells are loosely bound with the nucleus. That means, in all the atoms, the central part is a positively charged protons, nucleus. Around the nucleus, the electrons are revolving in elliptical orbits. Here, we have known that same charges are experiencing a force of repulsion and uh, opposite charges are experiencing a force of attraction, force of attraction. So in the case of uh, atom, the central part is the nucleus, the electrons which are very closer with the nuclei are having more binding energy, most force of attraction. But the electrons which are far away from the nucleus are not having a very close uh, binding energy or very high uh, attractive force. 
So that is why the outermost shell electrons are loosely bound with the nucleus. They are named as free electrons. They are named as free electrons. In the case of uh, free electrons, inside the metal, the free electrons are having kinetic energy and moving here and there. That means, consider this as a metal piece. Inside the metal piece, with one particular kinetic energy, the electrons are moving here and there. But they cannot have the energy to cross the surface. Because in order to leave the metallic surface, the free electrons must cross a potential barrier created by the positive nuclei. Because when the electrons are coming to the surface, the central nucleus is exerting a force of attraction over the electron. So they are just moving within the particular metal itself. It cannot cross the surface. So the potential barrier which prevents the free electrons from leaving the metallic surface is called the surface barrier. So that is named as the surface barrier. When the electrons are having an energy which are just crossing the surface barrier only, producing the electrons to cross the surface. Free electrons are having some kinetic energy. So that's why they are moving here and there. Then at one particular potential barrier, they can uh, cross the surface barrier. The minimum energy needed for an electron to escape from the nuclei surface is called work function of that metal. The work function differs for different materials. The work function can be represented as phi naught. The work function is represented as phi naught. Then it is measured by means of electron volt. It is just measured by means of electron volt. The SI unit of energy is joules. But in the case of atomic energy and nuclear energy, we are just measuring the energy by means of electron volt. So, one electron volt is defined as the kinetic energy gained by the electron when accelerated by a potential difference of 1 volt. The potential difference should be 1 volt. So, 1 electron volt is equal to 1 electron volt is equal to the kinetic energy gained by the electron which is equal to the kinetic energy gained by the electron gained by the electron and uh, which is just equivalent to the work done by the electric field that is equal to the work done by the electric field. So, which is equal to work done by the electric field which is equal to work done by the electric field work done by the electric field which is equal to Q into V. Q is the charge, V is the potential difference. Q value is equal to 1.602 1.602 coulombs into 1 volt which is equal to 1.602 joules which is equal to 1.602 joules. So, the 1 electron volt is equal to 1.602 joules. Consider this as a metal piece. This is a metal piece. Inside the metal piece the electrons are having some kinetic energy and moving here and there at room temperature. But when they are, when we are giving some more energy by means of uh, radiation or by means of giving heat energy or just colliding with, with the uh, high energy electrons, then the free electrons are gaining more energy to cross the surface barrier. So, the liberation of electrons from any surface of the substance is called electron emission. The maximum kinetic energy of the free electron inside a uh, metal, we are just considering one metal, that metal is having a kinetic energy value 0.5 electron volt and the energy which is required to overcome the surface barrier of the uh, particular metal be 3 electron volt. 
So, this is 3 electron volt. Here, when we are just calculating the work function, the minimum energy needed for an electron emission from the metallic surface is nothing but 3 minus 0.5 is equal to 2.5 electron volt, which is equal to 2.5 electron volt. This 2.5 electron volt is the work function of the metal. So, depending upon the property of the metal, the work function differs from one metal to other metal because the work function is different for different metals and it is a typical property of the metal and the nature of the surface and the nature of the surface. Here the table column shows the work function of different metals that is uh, cesium, potassium, sodium, calcium, molybdenum, lead, aluminium, mercury, copper, silver, nickel and platinum. The second column shows the symbol of the particular metal. The third column only approximately gives the work function value in electron volt. Whenever we have a lower work function, the electron emission be more. So, that metals only should be preferred for getting more electron emission. Here in this case, the CCM is having a lower work function. The electron emission are of four types. The electron emission are of four types. The first one is thermionic emission. First one is thermionic emission. The second one is field emission. The second one is field emission. The third category B photoelectric emission. Photoelectric emission. The fourth one is secondary emission. Thermionic emission, field emission, photoelectric emission and the last one B, secondary emission. First, we are going to see about the thermionic emission. Even in the word thermionic emission, thermal energy to be given. Here in the diagram, first part is the metal. Here inside the metal, the circles are just represented as free electrons. The free electrons are having a kinetic energy to move here and there in a metal. But uh, the second diagram shows that a thermal energy is given to the metal. So what happened? The heat energy is gained by the free electron and they are having an energy to break the potential barrier, surface barrier. So what happened? The electrons are liberated. So the first diagram shows the electron in the metal and the second diagram shows that the thermionic emissions, that is the electrons are just liberated from the metal. In the case of thermionic emission, uh, there are uh, so many examples are there, cathode ray tubes, uh, then electron microscope, x-ray tubes. Here it shows the thermionic emission, this is a hot filament. So a battery is connected to a high energy, high value battery is connected to a filament. So the filament is heated up, heat energy is given to the filament. So it is at a high temperature, so it is named as hot filament. So, at ordinary temperatures, the electrons are just moving within the surface of the metal itself. Now, after gaining the thermal energy, the electrons are just emitted from the hot filament. So, this process is known as thermionic emission. The second one is field emission. Field emission means high electric field is given to the metal. The same example, here this diagram shows the metal the circles are just represented as free electrons. Here, a strong electric field is just given to the metal. Then what happened? The free electrons are gaining a energy to liberate from the electrons. So the electrons are just emitted from the surface. So this type of emission is known as field emission. The third one is named as photoelectric emission. 
In the case of photoelectric emission, a high energy radiation is just allowed to fall on the surface of a metal. Here in this diagram, this part is just shown as a metal piece. Within the metal piece, the circles are just represented as electron. So a high energy radiation is falling on the surface of the metal. So it gains more energy. So the free electrons are emitted from the metal and the emitted electrons are shown in the figure. So this type of uh, emission is known as photoelectric emission. So this does not happen in all the metals. Only the photosensitive materials are having a nature of photoelectric emission. The examples for uh, photoelectric emission are photodiodes, photoelectric cells etc. The next type is the secondary emission. In the case of uh, secondary emission, a high speed electrons are just allowed to fall on the surface of the metal. So the free electrons are just gaining the energy and the secondary electrons are emitted, liberated. So in this case, here the, there are so many examples are there. It is uh, image identifiers, photo multiplier tubes, etc. The just examples for secondary emission. Why we are just calling this a secondary emission? Because here already high speed electrons are there. That uh, high speed electrons are uh, just allowed to fall on the surface of the metal. So it emits the secondary electrons. So this type is known as secondary emission.